were they thinking? That's the end to this franchise. Or this continuity, I should say. What an embarrassment. It's a travesty of creative decisions that barely qualifies as a Halloween movie. Stitched together to make a Frankenstein-esque type of horror film that bites off way more than it can chew. But okay, it's time to look for the good. That's the motto, we gotta stick to it. The production is quite good. Cinematography, lighting, aesthetic, practical effects, framing, all shot really well, all really good. The directing even is really most well done. David Gordon Green is very talented. But the editing has some huge blunders throughout that added on to the strange decisions, but we're focusing on the good. We're focusing on the good. Yet that's kind of hard to do when you've had one of the weaker scripts since Halloween Resurrection. It may be stronger than the zombie films, but that editing again, I'm a stickler for editing. It's obvious this movie was chopped to pieces as it feels like there's several plot details and elements it's completely missing from the movie that were more than likely filmed based on how it feels like it flows. I will also say that the last 15 minutes of the movie were actually quite good. Despite a wait, that's it, feeling to it when the credits roll. You know what, spoilers from here on out just because I can't anymore. Spoilers if you haven't seen Halloween ends, go. The decision to fast forward four years made me nervous. And it turns out I was right. Michael's just been living in a sewer, occasionally killing and maybe eating folk and no one notices. What's up with the homicidal homeless guy? Why does Michael act like Pennywise in the sewer? <laughs> when the prologue finished, I was already uncomfortable as the death of children always bothers me. But good grief, I didn't think the misery would fall this guy into making him a killer or the next to Michael Myers. I don't even fully understand what happens as the film has almost zero interest in telling you why. It's not just that he breaks under the pressure of feeling ostracized by the town. Something happens when he makes that connection with Michael. They make eye contact and now he's a killer. And that may seem reductive in how I'm saying that, but the film doesn't give you much more to chew on. It's under this guise of ambiguity that you should decide for yourself. But that seems lazy. Corey becomes Michael for a good stretch, but I'm never fully buying why the sudden snap and connection with Michael, whom he beats in a fight and steals his mask from, why the heck did he let him live anyway? Either time, why did Michael let him live and then why did Corey let him live? After all of that, Corey kills himself. Or at least it looks like it until Michael finishes the job. Over Allison? Not that she's not great or anything, but that romance is solely built on shared trauma that's never fully believable in its pacing or its ideology or how it really plays out towards the end. I will say I was pretty invested in what was happening, but it's more of a, from a curiosity standpoint. It's not so much invested as it is curious. Wondering if the bafflement would ever cease if things got explained and they don't. I will say those final last 15 minutes again, that final battle with Michael and Haddonfield gathering to destroy the body was pretty moving, as was that final montage. And it made the rest of what the film was trying to say seem a little clearer, at least in theory. It's still the wrong approach, but I can appreciate what they were trying to do, but I honestly can't believe this is the route they chose to go. I'm generally dumbfounded. When Laurie Strode and Michael Myers feel like they're tacked on at the end of your movie, they feel like the afterthought, where their final scene feels like a whole nother movie altogether, there is a huge problem with the creative decisions that formed this film. There was not enough movie after Halloween Kills to make a movie. I used to say that Kills could be tacked onto the ending of 2018, but I'll rescind that now. Halloween Ends needs to be re-edited and just take out anything that's not focused on Lori's journey. That 25 minutes of scream time she has could be a great ending to Kills, but instead we got this whole stretch. This just goes to show that slick production techniques don't make up for a half-baked story and clever editing that can't hide a fragmented script. No matter how good it looks or how compelling individual scenes are on their own, the collective whole is a disaster and approaching something entirely wrong, trying to fabricate something as an ending that goes in a direction that most won't care enough to try to dissect. But I will try for you. I suppose. The commentary I can appreciate as it's about the cycle of evil and the trauma and violence it causes. And if this had been the main thread with Lori, it would have been better as there's some powerful messaging there beneath all of the confusion you will have watching it. Moments of a do shine through, especially in the final dialogue from Lori, and I'm thankful for that at least. It was a clever way to use the term the shape in the film. Evil takes shape as Michael Myers. But instead of leaving the film with that being on my mind, I'm so bewildered by all the creative decisions in the movie in that final shot where it's just the empty room and Michael's mask just sitting there. It doesn't hit as hard as it should and you come to the credits with this feeling like, okay, I guess that's the end. One other final note. I do appreciate that this shies away from any pointless, gratuitous nudity or overuse of profanity. That was refreshing. In the end, Halloween ends is a confusing time. It's not a good movie and it's a bad Halloween movie with solid production techniques yet writing that's just not well thought out. As I feared, 
this entire trilogy feels largely aimless and pointless in retrospect. I give Halloween Ends 1.5 out of 5 stars. What a bummer. What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe so you can talk about the other Halloween movies as I post reviews of them. And remember, even with this, always look for the good.